Welcome to Epic Elite on Quiet Graves. After I did the Battle for Evening Star video on Ginger Spice, I thought I had done all the web flagging quests as a video, but then I realized I hadn't done on Quiet Graves. This is a shorty, so uh, it's good for this video because I, I didn't want to do a long video. Uh, so this is part two. Uh, I think I'm going to do an, one more video. So part two of three where I'm doing a little experiment to see if I can run these, you know, heroic and iconic past lives as a warlock, but still get like like my paladin heroic past life, barbarian heroic past life, etc. by just going nine warlock and playing it as my regular enlightened spirit build. So what I'm doing now is in, isn't any kind of like here, this is what you should do. It's not like I'm not trying to come up with a build that's going to be a good build. I'm trying to come, the goal is to try to come up with something tolerable or manageable. You know, will I like it enough to play it as a warlock? Because I have, you know, I have a dispassion for playing melee, so I, you know, I'd much rather try playing it as a warlock. Now, obviously, DPS way lower. As I mentioned in the previous video, when I did Heroic Elite Enter the Kobold at level 19, my findings from 15 to 19 would indicate that absolutely in heroics you can totally go nine warlock play it as an enlightened spirit sword and board kind of thing the dps is going to be a little bit lower than if you were well quite a bit lower than if you were pure warlock but it was totally doable i mean i solo elite and the kobold in a reasonable time like that's good enough for me uh so my findings in epic have been a lot more discouraging so first off let me just say that I, I wouldn't I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Um, the question is, is it tolerable for me? It's really borderline. It's just right there on the cusp. Uh, I have been doing epic elites, you know, and so I definitely wouldn't recommend it for like soloing epic elites. But you know, when I've been running in a group uh, with my guildies, like it's been fine. Like when I'm just part of a group, it's been fine. You could also do it like if you just wanted to like hard streak. There are a lot of people out there that don't elite streak. You know, a lot of people are hard streaking, and that's fine. So you could totally, if you're interested in hard streaking, you can totally do it. Like it, it, at least so far through level 25, uh, it seems like d doing things on hard would be would be absolutely fine. Because I, I'm doing them on elite. They're a little bit slower than I like. You know, my DPS is definitely lacking. Um, it's definitely been a little bit painful. And one of the uh, surprises for me is I didn't realize until I got to level 21 that in order to take the feats Epic Eldritch Blast and Epic Arcane Eldritch Blast, you have to have 12 levels of Warlock. So I was really looking to those to boost my my uh, DPS in Epic levels, but I'm not going to be able to take those. So I ended up taking just like Evocation Focus at 21. I took Intensify Spell at 24. So... You know, I thought I'd run a quest and do a video of it and just to kind of show where it's at. And, you know, you can decide, like, you could look at it and go, oh, that's freaking garbage. There's no way I want to do that. Or you might think, oh, well, you know, it's manageable. I'd rather, you know, if you're like me and you have a dispassion for playing certain classes or certain, you know, like I don't like to play melees, then, you know, maybe you might want to try to make something work. Now, I had a guildie ask me why not just do six Warlock. And so one of the things I want to mention there is that when you go 9 Warlock versus 6 Warlock, you're getting 3 extra damage dice. You're getting 2 extra damage dice on your Eldritch Blast and 1 extra damage dice on your your pack damage. So, you know, that's, I mean, you're already losing out on DPS from, you know, having only 9 Warlock levels. So, you know, if you go only 6, then you're losing even more. But, you know, you can do what you want. Let's do the quest. See what happens. So I did this at level 23. I soloed it at level 23. Uh, in 10 minutes in Sentinel, and then I tried it again. I've been experimenting with um, Divine Crusader, and I was able to do it in 7 minutes. So, you know, it's a reasonable time. Certainly not a good time, but it's reasonable. I decided to get my visors of the Flesh Render Guards out of the bank, though, because these guys just level drain like crazy. My trash DPS is a lot more reasonable, but my boss DPS has been pretty bad. But the sur survivability is there. So I, but you know, I was experimenting with Divine Crusader because I was hoping to get you know, because it's more DPS. I mean, definitely. 
Um, and I figure since it's, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to come up with any kind of permanent build here, I'm just trying to get the 30 so I can get the past lives in, you know, in, in, in as tolerable or as reasonable way possible, but still playing it as an Enlightened Spirit Warlock. And I just, the survivability wasn't where I like it to be. Um, you know, if you watch my videos, you know that I have, you know, I like to build tunes that are very survivable. I also really like Renewal from Unyielding Sentinel. It's really good maintenance healing that takes care of, you know, the permanent damage that you might take beyond your, the temporary hit point damage. or I should say beyond what the temporary hit points can absorb. So like I said, I did it in 10 minutes earlier at level 23, actually it was last night. 25 now, so I'm hoping to do a little bit better than that. So this guy, is a, if you're not very familiar with this quest, this guy is the toughest. He's even tougher than the boss. Um, he gets a buff that makes him tougher when he's got undead around him. Necromantic shielding, when in control of a few undead minions, you are able to take some of their innate durability, blah 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 blah. Point is, make sure you take out his minions, his undead minions, otherwise he's just harder to kill. So I do have Consecration twisted in as well as Crusade and then Radiant Spell Power for the 30 light damage and then of course gotta have Empyrean Magic on an Enlightened Spirit. That is a must twist. So, like I said, I'll do one more video, probably at level 29, so I can give you like some feedback on performance in upper epic levels. But like right now, I mean, the only real epic stuff that I've done is like the Vaughn series. I've done Chains 1 and 2. Yeah, I've done a bunch of Jibbers runs with my guildies. I've done the Lords of Dust chain, all on Epic Elite. Now, most of those I did with a group. I did chain one by myself, like at level 22 and 23. I need to worry about him. The visors of the Flesh Render Guard with that, that Death Ward clicky. Those come from Splinter Skull, in case you're not familiar. Those are that's a nice clicky to have, and you can you know they're not exclusive, so you can build up a collection of them. Comes from the end reward. I've had some of my guildies say they just never pull it, you know, but I, I feel like every time I do Splinter Skull it's on the list, so I guess it's just luck of the draw. You know, if you have a tune without Death Ward then that's a real nice cookie to have. It's a level 5 item. I think it's level 5. Yeah. And other than that, you got your eternal potions of death ward, which come from your... Oh, your mysterious remnant turn in, and they're in the Hall of Heroes. And then you've got your epic dust cart, which is a much more difficult item to try to get, and that's a level 20 clicky. But that does a mass death ward. It's only mass death ward clicky in the game. But uh, very, very few death ward clickies in this game. You know, now that I have, I have Intensify spell now, which I got at 24, and I just don't really feel like I'm doing 
it's not going any faster than when I was 23 and, and didn't have it. I think what I'm going to end up doing though, because I started to think about my strategy for building up, you know, all my past lives that I want. And because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm epic completionist, but I'm not triple epic completionist. I just have the three past lives from every sphere when, you know, there are, there are a total of nine from every sphere. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock out my heroic separate and play it, you know, play, do the nine warlock thing and then, you know, like 11 paladin for the next life and then nine warlock, 11 barbarian. That's going to totally be doable. Might even do some bard lives. And then do the iconic separate and run them as just like, you know, one or two levels of whatever and then 18 warlock and then play it as my lion spirit. And the reason why I want to do that is because well, I'll take those to 30, epic reincarnate, then go back to 30 getting an epic past life too and just really leveraging as much of that first time bonus as I can because you know the way I'm doing it now trying to find something tolerable to get the heroic and the iconic and get it to 30 you know I, I want to get the hell out of these lives as fast as possible and I'm not going to want to epic reincarnate and go back to 30 and do it again it's just too slow and so you know I'll, I'll be more it'll definitely be a lot more viable to take the you know the 18-2 and do multiple epic lives there, just run them through to 30 twice. And start amassing some more epic past lives. Well, there you have it. You get to see for yourself what it's like. 7 minutes, 54 seconds. So a couple minutes faster than when I was level 23 and didn't have Intensify. Great wrapping. This is where it comes from. Well, thanks for watching. If you have questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. Uh, if you have questions uh, about uh, my Voodoo Warlock build, which is not showcased here, I want to emphasize that Voodoo Warlock is normally a pure warlock, but you can respond on my build post. And if you happen to be on Sarlona, you're welcome to send me a tell.